All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on where you are and what time you're watching this. Uh, I'm not gonna do some big long intro. You clicked on this video because you want a sort of simple and easy to follow guide or to-do list of all the things that you need to do on a daily and on a weekly basis in Throne and Liberty. Um, so that's what I'm here to go over with you because there's a lot of information out there. Uh, it can get quite complicated. I wanna try and make this simple and easy um, to understand. So let me go into the game here and I want to let you know off the rip that what I used to do was just make a list and go over all the things that I need to do. This is not really a great way to do it. So what I have done, I'm an accountant uh, for my actual job. And what I did was I put together a spreadsheet of all the things that you need to be doing with like little tick boxes. So you can check them off as you go. Um, this didn't take me very long to do. I find it helps me a lot. I will put the link to this in the description. It's totally free. If it helps you, it helps you. If it doesn't, it doesn't. At least it helps me. It's easy to keep track of. Um, and I think that it uh, just makes it a little bit easier and you can kind of go through and check it off like a little to-do list, which as an accountant, I love to do. So here we are in Stone Guard Castle. And the first thing that you need to do, or you can do these in a variety of orders, I guess. So I shouldn't say the first thing you need to do, but uh, I'm going to break it down into the purchases and into like the gameplay, what you actually need to do. So in terms of purchases, there are three main people that you actually care about. The coin contract merchant, the sundries merchant, and the guild merchant. They both, or I guess all three of them, have weekly buys. And then uh, the coin contract merchant and the guild merchant have daily buys. So let's just keep it simple and we'll go to the sundries merchant. On a weekly basis, you're going to want to buy uh, these allied resistance forces contracts for both these. Uh, these are for the secret dungeon tower and these are for open world dungeons. So you're gonna to wanna to buy all of those for $275,000 or what, what's it called, Solent. Um, if you're new to level 50, just know you're gonna run through this like crazy, but you always get some. Uh, next is the coin contract merchant. There are a couple things that you wanna buy here. Depending on where you sort of are in terms of progression, um, I usually buy the blessing pouch first, then all the ink I can buy. Um, and with whatever I have left over, oh, sorry, and Mystic Keys. You definitely need Mystic Keys. And then whatever I have left over, I just start putting into trait extraction stones. Uh, you can also get your parchment from here but I would probably say get extraction stones instead and get your parchments from open world dungeons. Um, so you're gonna spend the rest of it on this. This is a weekly limit, so you can kind of chip it away at this as you go. Um, kind of like a brief TLDR on what everything does. Again, I wanna try and keep this simple. You can open blessing pouches once a day to get um, certain items. You can use enchanted ink to make lithographs that you can, when you buy them from the auction house, you can um, use the enchanted ink as well as other resources to make gear from the auction house. Trade extraction stones, you can extract traits to sell on the auction house. And mystic keys, you get to do your mystic globes every day, which we will talk about later. So you're gonna purchase all that, sorry, not that, you're gonna, Dang, it got rid of it. Anyways, so you want all these max enchanted ink. You want that as well. I like to go through and buy the ores. I'm kind of low because I haven't done my contracts yet today, but you can also buy these ores if you so desire. And uh, if you need weapons, I have my bis weapons already, but if you need weapons, you can also get a decent weapon from here as well. But definitely the most important things, which I have outlined on this list coin contract merchant you need the enchanted ink the blessing pouch the mystic keys and the trait conversion stones um those are must buys on a 
daily and weekly basis. Then you're going to go to your guild con guild merchant. I would highly, highly recommend you get into a guild. Um, they're very easy to come by, and they provide a lot of benefits that are outside the scope of this video. So a couple things you need here. You want all these rare material selection chests. You want all the precious base material selection chests. You want all the rare polished crystals. Uh, well, at least, sorry, you don't actually need I should redact that. You want all the precious polished crystals, and you want to essentially spend your remainder on trait conversion stones. Um, these are your musts on a daily basis. These are your, uh, and again, I'll go, I'll go through this later, but um, these are your essentially use your extras for this. You can also buy potions here, which I'm actually gonna do. Um, but your musts, again, as I included in that spreadsheet, are the rare base material, the precious base material, the precious polished stone. Uh, these are going to help you craft gear as you progress. You can get whatever you need from these ones. You can upgrade rares to precious, and you can do the uh, precious polished crystal, which again just helps you craft gear. So you want all those on a daily and weekly basis. And then we did the sundries merchant. Just remember to get both these and these. And that is your purchases essentially in a nutshell. Sundries merchant, coin contract merchant, guild merchant, dailies, and weeklies. So now that you've spent all your resources, there are things that you need to do in-game, daily, weekly, and sort of on an ongoing basis, which will be part two of the video. Um, you need to do a couple things. Why is my map not opening? All right. You need to do your contracts from a contract um, manager. I prefer to do them at Watcher's Post, which goes into the Ruins of Terrain, hopefully I'm saying that correctly, and Phonos Basin. I don't know if it's just my luck, but I have found the most precious, precious blessing pouches from here, uh, and the best drops from here, and I like the ruins because the zombies are really easy to just AoE down as a staff and longbow player. The other place you can do these are... Um, Oh my god, I'm blanking right now. Where is the tower? The Pure Light Tower, wherever it is. Um, is it over here? Game is freezing? No. Uh, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Pure Light Tower. Where the hell is the Pure Light Tower? Jeez. Pure Light Tower is the other place that you can do them. And then it will give you Pure Light Hill, or I believe Shattered Temple. So these are your two options. Sorry, uh, I never go over here. That's why I kind of don't really remember where it is. But you can go to the Pure Light Tower, Contract Manager. You know what, I'll just go there just to show you. But I do prefer Watcher's Post. So Pure Light Tower, you come here. Um, and you can go to the contract copy. manager and you can grab mm -mm, excuse me level 50 contracts for whatever you need i typically go for the base material selection chests the rare polished crystals right now i still need to get my skills leveled up because i'm a new 50 new ish 50 uh, so i go with rare parchments and the red red and blue ores, the blue ores being for uh, your passive and active skill books, which I still need to level up. If you don't need to level up, then you would go to your other thing. Basically, just go to what fits your needs. And again, I've included that in this guide uh, to make it really simple. So you can go here, or what I prefer is to go to Once you get there, Watcher's Post. And go talk to Felix. And you can see I've already been doing them. So you get 10 of these per day, and it'll stack up to 60. 
and each contract takes one right. Uh, and you can select a contract and then refresh, select a contract, refresh, select a contract, refresh. Try and get like the best things that you can get for you. Again, I've included that. Um, while you're doing those contracts, you want to do your mystic key, mystic globes. So as you're going throughout the, I doubt I'll be able to find one because I'm recording, of course. But as you're going throughout your areas, doing your contracts, I'll see if I can find one. But again, I'm trying to keep this video pretty short. Um... Oh, nice. Actually, I got lucky. As you're going through and doing your uh, daily contracts in here, you're killing orc soldiers or whatever the case may be, um, you will also use your mystic keys to unlock these mystic globes, which give you precious parchments, abyssal contract tokens, whatever you uh, need. Now I'm going to have to get out of here, so just bear with me without all these people killing me. Um, those will let you, um, those will just give you additional resources. They're super easy to, to do. Um, you can just do them. They're in the same area as your daily contracts. So no big deal. Uh, just do those from purchasing your weekly or your daily keys and then just use the keys to unlock the globes as you go. Uh, sometimes a, I think it's called a rift will appear while you're doing those. Um, go to the rift as well. And yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Again, that it will be included in the sheet that I provide. Co-op dungeons. So you get dimensional contract tokens that recharge every 24 hours and you get 900. You need 300 contract tokens to obtain a reward from the boss after you complete the co-op dungeon. So once you're at level 50, your co-op dungeons are going to be these uh, six, depending on what you need. So for me, my Abyss bow is Nether bow, so I spent a lot of time in Death's Abyss. Um, my Abyss best in slot uh, staff was from Tyrant's Isle, so I spent a lot of time in there. You get three of these per day or sorry, you get 900 per day and you can use 300 to get your, open the chest at the end and get your reward. So you essentially get three per day and those will stack up to 4,500. So uh, 15 dungeons you can stack them up to. It's also important to note that um, you can go into the negative as long as you have a positive amount prior. So what that means is that's kind of a bad way to explain it. I have 680 tokens. So today I can do three dungeons. Uh, the first 300 will take me down to 380. The second 300 will take me down to 80. And then I can go into the negative and be taken all the way down to negative 220. Um, as long as you have a positive amount before you go into the negative. So if you have zero, I don't believe you can go into the negative for a dungeon, but since I have 80, I can go down to 220. I just discovered that, uh, I think, I don't know, two days ago, um, and that is very helpful knowledge to have. Um, then in terms of gameplay, you have weekly. So the big weekly thing is the daily missions, or sorry, the weekly missions. Throughout the week, you can do things that will uh, sort of tick these boxes, complete these missions. And when you do, you have a chance at getting a certain piece of, or I guess it could be, it's not always equipment, but it's generally equipment um, as a reward for completing and carrying out that mission. So I completed, what is this, seven? Uh, it's broken down into world, co-op, dungeons, guild, and PvP. I don't really PvP, so these never really get ticked for me. Um, but you would click on this and it's gonna give you, oh, you can select that or this. Uh, you can click on this, you can get that or this, 
so forth. Hopefully you get something that matters to you or something you can sell in the auction house. I don't think any of this is really that great for me. So um, I'll likely be lithographing or taking the trade out of something. Just kidding, they come with all traits locked, so you can't do that. Lithographing potentially, um, or you can take trait unlock stones. Uh, depending on, again, your needs and what your what you really need at the time. Then you have sort of, well, okay, so now you also need to do your allied these. Your, um, contracts that you bought from the Sundries Merchant on a weekly basis. But I don't want to include these under weekly. These are also kind of a weekly, but kind of not, because you also get them as you're doing other things. So you definitely buy them on a weekly basis, but you don't necessarily just do nine a week. Um, in either case, um, you would you do need to crack these op oh sorry, uh, crack these open, obtain them. I got however much of everything. Um, and then now, in addition to my weekly missions, I gotta do these on a weekly basis. Or essentially an ongoing basis because you're gonna get more as well. So I don't wanna call it a weekly basis, but you can't buy them on a weekly basis. Um, the last thing that I wanna touch on is do your guild contracts. So where is it here? Guild contracts. Every, well, essentially, again, this isn't really weekly. This is sort of ongoing. Uh, your guild is going to have contracts that you can do until they get full. You get rewarded for contributing to these. Um, it also rewards your guild. Your guild can level up, get access to more beneficial perks, things like that. So you want to uh, do these as well. You can also, I would recommend structuring. So for example, my guild uh, contract is to raid Shadow Crypt. So what I'm gonna probably do in my, why is it not organized like that? Uh, what I'm probably going to do first is my Shadow Crypt contracts because doing these contracts is going to benefit me, but it's also gonna simultaneously benefit my guild. Excuse me. So it just makes sense to do this contract at the same time as your guild um, contract. However, you don't always get lined up. So in that case, if it's not, just do what you need to do or what you want to do. But I would encourage you to always check your guild contract to your guild contracts, plural, to see what... Um, See if you can align anything that you need to do on a daily basis on your, with your guild contracts. Uh, the last thing that I want to mention is doing these, um, sorry, doing these contracts gives you, uh, I'll just click into one because I know I'm going to do it today anyway, gives you abyss currency. Um, as well as doing co-op dungeons. Now, the Abyss currency is used... Oh, sorry, no. Scratch that. Don't listen to what I just said. These contracts... I work as a contract, knowing when to give up a contract... Give you Abyssal contract token points. Sorry, that's what I was thinking of. And those contribute towards your allotted amount of open world dungeons you can essentially do. So these contract tokens are used to acquire XP and soul and bonuses from the monsters in the open world dungeons. The open world dungeons are um, Silas's Abyss, Shadowed Crypt, um, Sanctum of Desire, and Sordoma Isle, Island, whatever. Uh, there's also Ant's Nest in this temple, but nobody really does those because you want to be doing the level 50 ones. 
you can farm those and thus farm these up to the amount of contract tokens that you have. And you get those contract tokens through Knowing when to give up doing contract these contracts. So assuming that you don't have full, um, full Abyssal contract tokens like I don't right now, it makes sense to do these contracts from the contract manager first to accumulate up your abyssal contract tokens before you go and do the open world dungeons. That way you have the most amount of contract tokens when you go in. If, however, this is full, you have 20,000 of 20,000, you want to do your open world dungeons first because otherwise you're just I going to be going into you're going to be stacking these abyssal contract token points into a full bar and you're not going to actually be getting the benefit from them so that's just an important note to understand also another important note is i have not included anything about cooking or fishing or whatever the other skill is uh emotes or whatever they're called, amiibos. Um, I don't particularly care. I hate the fishing mechanic in this game personally, but um, I don't do cooking or fishing, and I haven't really got into the house stuff yet. So I would encourage you, if those are things that you're interested in, to look to a different content creator or whatever. There's probably a more specific guide. Somebody who really understands the ins and outs of those mechanics, I just do not. Um, and to be honest, I'm not particularly interested. Uh, I have enough content, I feel, to get me through, um, what I'm doing now, so I'm not particularly worried about it, but just an important note for you as a viewer. So, again, I will include a link to this, uh, in the description below. You'll be able to download it, use it. You can go through today. Uh, I did that, so that's checked off. I got my Enchanted Ink, that's checked off. Um, I did these, those are checked off. Uh, I got these checked off. I didn't do these or these yet, and I haven't done these yet, but I will check them off as I go. Um, it just helps you stay on track, stay organized. Not required, uh, but it's something that I wish somebody did for me, so I just sat down and, and did it real quick. Um, Aside from that, I want to say thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful to at least one person. And if so, then I've already kind of done what I think I want to do here. Um, the game is very free to play, but certainly a lot easier if you pay to win. Um, I'm not a pay to win person. I play free to play. I have no issues with the game aside from PvP is, is quite uh, brutal when you're not pay to win. But yeah, there's lots of content in the game. The game's really fun. I would highly recommend it. Um, and I think you'll have a good time playing. Even though you've already been playing, so I'm not sure what that ramble was about. Um, also, I stream on Twitch typically every day right now, but that'll be dropping with, with work depending on how work goes. Um, I would encourage you to follow me. It's free. It helps me a ton. I would really appreciate it. And also subscribe on YouTube. I post all my VODs there as well as other short videos like this. Um, so that would really mean a lot to me. It's free. It would help a ton and I would greatly appreciate it. Otherwise, I hope you have a great rest of your day, a great night, and um, happy hunting and farming and playing in Throne of Liberty, and I hope to see you around. So take care and have a wonderful rest of your day.